Amen. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord today? God is good. Amen. I love that song, but it's like, it's, it's, I don't want to say difficult to sing it, <clears throat> but they do the angels bow before him and heaven and earth adore him. I'm, I'm from the old school. Don't let the gray hair fool you, but we had a song I grew up on that uh, was uh, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve. Anybody remember that song? What a mighty God we serve. All right. So every time we go to sing that, I, I, it's like that comes back to me. But, hey, listen, we're so glad that you're here today, and um, if this is your first time here, we pray that it's not your last time here. You should have got a connection card if you can fill that out. Then towards the end of service, find somebody, chase somebody down. We got a gift for you. We want to honor you. We want to love you and appreciate that you are here today. And as I said, we believe that it's not by accident that you're here today. If this is your hundredth time here, then we're so glad to have you here today. And we appreciate you so much. Um, how many enjoyed worship today? Man. What a God, what a God. What a God, what a God. Um, let's jump into this thing. Let's go, uh, we're going to go, just a couple of scriptures today. Um, John chapter 4. Verse 4, and I, I love when the worship team, I don't know like what they're singing song-wise. I like it to be a surprise, um, but I, like, I love how just God works. What a God, what a God, that when you don't talk back and forth to an extent, and then it just kind of meshes with what you're going to preach today. And I just like, man, when they were singing it, I was like, God, you're so good. Amen. Uh, John chapter 4, verse 4, we're just, I'm going to grab little bits and pieces of this passage, but I encourage you, if you get a chance, um, you have a, if you have a Bible app or if you have a, have a Bible, um, read it when you get home, search it. Uh, you can get on our app. Um, Impact has an app, and there's so much on there. There's notes and stuff. There's a sermon on there. Um, but also down at the bottom, what I love about the app is that there's a Bible there's, the Bible app is on our app, and so you can just research. Yeah, just I mean everything's right there. Um, but I encourage you to read that whole chapter. Not right now, this moment, but allow me just to take some things um, from there. If I was trying to be all professional, I would say let me extrapolate some things from this particular text. But we're just gonna go up in here and just let's do this thing, yens or y'alls or wherever you're from. Uh, John chapter 4, verse 4 is talking about the woman at the well. But I love this passage, right? This verse right here. And it says, But he, speaking of Jesus, but he needed to go through Samaria. We're going to start there for a moment. But uh, let's just go ahead and pull the next scripture. John chapter 4, um, verse uh, 8. Uh, I think I needed 18. Do we have 18 or is it 8? I might have messed up. But it says, For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. He, had to need, he needed to go through Samaria. Um, verse 18, if we get an opportunity, if we can pull that up. But verse 18 speaks of Jesus approaches this woman at the well. First he says he needs to go through Samaria. And then he tells the disciples they leave, and he meets this woman. And then they have this conversation, which we're going to talk about here in a moment. But it really hits home uh, because he gets all up in her business. I, I, love, I love Jesus when he gets all up in your business. Some people don't like when he gets all up in your business. But I love Jesus when he gets all up in your business. And so he approaches. They have a conversation, which we're going to talk about here in a moment. But I love verse 18. He says, well, you've had five husbands. And the one now, I'm not real sure what's going on. And she was like flabbergasted. Like, oh, I, I perceive you as a prophet. And we'll go a little further in this, but I want to focus on those two just for a moment. I want to preach to you today from the title, A Heart Transplant. A Heart Transplant. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for these people that are here today that have come to worship you and glorify you. I love your scripture because when it says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. We are living out that scripture here today. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So he said he needed, you read that text and, and maybe a novice, maybe you um, just kind of gave your heart to the Lord not long ago. Oh, we have that scripture up there. For you've had five husbands, and the one whom you have now is not your husband. Have I spoken truly about that? As you like, uh, yeah. 
Um, so, Jesus is journeying and he tells the disciples that he needs to go through Samaria. And as I said, for a novice reader of the Bible, maybe you just are learning scriptures and and you would just read over that. But man, that scripture right there is just boom, so impactful. Because he needs to go through Samaria. It was startling enough that he needed to go through Samaria, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a moment. But to have a conversation, we see in verse 18, but to have a conversation with a woman of a questionable past takes it to a whole nother level. So we have some things going on in this chapter here that he needed to go through Samaria, which is, I mean, which is man which is a struggle, but he's going to run into this woman, what we see now, that he's looking for this woman with a questionable past. What is a, a, a Jewish teacher doing in Samaria? Now, I'm not going to give the whole history and the context of it, but we'll just jump in it for a moment just to build this message here, that if you understand, as I do, uh, the, the, the cultural context of this passage is that uh, Samaria was a particular area that most Jews avoided. They just didn't go there. Uh, the theology of the time lended itself to an ideology that any Samaritan woman was a constant perpetual state of uncleanliness. The Samaritan people were not respected as legitimate believers in the first place after the Jewish Orthodox tradition. And so they just did not get along. So here Jesus is needing, needing to go through Samaria, the place that the Jews avoided. Not only is he needing to go through Samaria, but he's getting ready to have a run-in with a, a woman that has what we see is had five husbands and the one you're now with, we're not real sure what's going on with. Can you hear me today? But as we start read in between, almost in between the lines, in John chapter 4, verse 4, going into John chapter 4, verse 18, they begin to have this dialogue between the two which is which is amazing and Jesus goes in which he shouldn't have been there which they they don't converse the the disciples are gone probably wondering what he's doing and here Jesus is at this well begins to speak to this woman and the first thing he asks he says will you give me a drink I could just imagine if you like to jump in to that text I, I can just imagine the look on her face because here is Jesus say will you give me something to drink and I'm thinking and this is just me because I like to just like wonder what the facial expressions were because I'm a facial expression type guy my wife will tell you oh you know I'm just like my facial expressions are everywhere I just gave my secret away in life and I can just imagine will you give me a drink and she's probably like oh no you didn't like, it kind of comes across a little bit, depending on what version you're reading. Like, hey, give me a drink. And she's like, oh, no, you didn't roll up in here like that. And the Samaritan woman, and I think maybe they're just here in this context that I'm reading from the New King James Version, does it? She's somewhat polite here. But she just comes out and says it. She says, listen, you are a Jew. She just, just cuts to the chase. She's like, let's be real. What, what are you up to? Like, what are you trying to sell? It's like the Kirby sweeper guy coming to our house in the middle of pandemic COVID. What are you doing knocking on our door in the middle of the thing? And, and she says here, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? And then it has a little paraphrase for Jews do not associate with Samaritans, which we already covered that. Jesus answered her and said, if you knew the gift of God... And who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. 
So now she's a little curious, and so she responds back, Hmm. You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Jesus now just, boom, busts it out. Because she said, where are you going to get this living water? And he set her up, and she's like, boom. And you, I mean, it's like, like a lawyer in the courtroom. You open the door, girl. Where are you going to get this living water? And Jesus' response was, everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And I love it because she was like, yo, give me this water. But, but if I can really just read that one more time, just so you can grab a hold of that. Because it's kind of the essence of this whole message here today. That Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up into eternal life. If I can just expound just for a moment just on that particular verse there, he's basically telling her, I'm everything you've been looking for. I'm everything you've been needing. I'm everything you've been searching for. I'm everything you've been crying about. I'm everything you need. I'm everything you want. I'm everything you seek. I'm everything you long for. I'm everything that you've been craving for. And I've been sitting here waiting for you. I don't know if you're grabbing what is happening here. He has just broke all religious protocol he has just uh, I, I you know you I, I you know I grew up around here and if I can somewhat this is just a small uh, minimal way to describe it but growing up here uh, the the bridge is the bridge but I told Stephanie she's from Hilton Head South Carolina and when uh, we got married and she first came up here. I, wanted, I told her, I said, listen, uh, we, we live in this area that like Ohio is like right there. And it's just a, a bridge that separates us. Like we're just a couple minutes apart. It's a bridge, but there's an invisible bridge. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, just you'll be up here for some time and you'll, you'll, you'll catch on real quick. That West Virginia and Ohio, they're, they are around each other, but... It got quiet in here. <laughs> and so it's somewhat like this, that here Jesus has done crossed the bridge and gone over into Ohio. And she's like, what you doing over on this bridge, on this side of the river? And so here, just think about it, they're having this conversation. Not only did he just picture it this way, let, let me bring it to this. Not only did he, did he, he had a, uh, 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 maybe a Brook Bruin shirt on, and he crossed over, over by Harding Stadium with his Brook Bruin shirt on. She's got her Steubenville Big Roll Red Roll shirt on, and now they're trying to have a conversation. And she's like, oh, what's she representing? Are you feeling it now? Are you catching it? Like, are we jumping into it now? And he just, he didn't care what anybody else said. Anything happened. It says he needed to go through some. He didn't just wander there. He needed to go there. He knew that there was someone thirsty. And he waited on her. I'm here to tell you the king is waiting on you. That it is not by accident 
that you are here. I know that I said that in the beginning, but it is not by accident that you are here and that you thought it was just this happened and it was a coincidence here and this transpired while well, somebody kind of invited you and you weren't sure and you were supposed to go this day and you didn't go that way. But all the while, the king has been waiting on you. And so now he goes and he begins to talk about this living water and then all of a sudden kind of changes the narrative a little bit. And we see that she says, I perceive you to be a prophet because he basically says you've had five husbands and the one now. But I'm thinking to myself, of all the things that you could have prophesied about to let her know that you... We're a prophet? Did you use that? Like, I'm thinking maybe he could have been like, last week you wore gray shoes. <laughs> and you were here and here at such a time. Oh, I perceive you to be a prophet. You know, nowadays that's what the, 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 the so-called prophets say. I got a word for you. <laughs> I see you in a gray shirt. Walk in the streets. And everybody's like, oh my goodness, yes! <laughs> I could go further while I get in trouble. <laughs> Not discounting the offer of the prophet. I'm just, are you with me? Don't throw a tomato at me. <laughs> Don't rip up your connection card. I'm like, I'm never coming back. <laughs> but there's a reason why. That he says you've had five husbands and one now. But this is, this is the mind-blowing part for me. Because you think he just, and she's like, yeah, 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 I, I, yeah. I've had five husbands in, in, my, in my, my, my hookup now. But he doesn't dive into it. Like she just opened the door and you would think, and, and, and we think of it in our terms of, let me use the word, I don't even know if it's a, a word, but our religiosity. We think that, oh, you got her, Jesus, get her now. Get her. Get her. She's had five husbands and the one now, and she's a hot mess. Go, Jesus, go. Tell her. Tell her how messed up she is. Tell her how dysfunctional she is. Tell her how jacked up she is. Tell her. Tell her she shouldn't have five husbands and you're a hot mess and you need to be in therapy. Tell her, Jesus. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religiosity, the church is like, yes, it's almost like uh, the woman uh, that was caught in adultery and they picked up the stone. Stone her. She deserves death. But Jesus doesn't even get into that. Jesus mentions that and that's it. He doesn't deal, let me put it this way, he doesn't deal with her actions. He doesn't say, hey, let me ask this question. Yes. Like, what happened to guy number one? Like, did something like, what, what, or, and, and guy, and then you skip guy number two, and then guy, like, and, and they, he doesn't even, when she said, I had five husbands, and now she says, I, I got somebody. He doesn't even ask, hey, is the guy you're with now, is this kind of a domestic partnership thing you got going on? He doesn't mention any of those things. He doesn't beat her down. He doesn't condemn her. He doesn't get, you know, stones or he doesn't go grab other people and say, listen, we, we, we got to deal with you. Why? Because he was after her heart. He was preaching to her without her even know he was preaching to her. Because he told her that this water will never fill you. But the water that I have will become in you a well of life. And he begins, he doesn't go after her actions, he's going after her heart. And we see what's really happening in this chapter is what's getting ready to happen is that there's going to be a heart transplant. 
Not an action transplant. He didn't say, hey, you need to go get your stuff together and you need to dump this and dump that and you need to call number three and you need to tell him what's up now and you found something. He doesn't say all those things. He said, I want to deal with your heart. And that's what Impact Church is about. It's a heart thing. It's not about religion. It's not about the actions. It's about your heart. He wants your heart. Do you know this? And maybe you don't, but I'm going to tell you. That the word heart is used 830 times in the Bible. My mama used to tell me if I had to say it once, more than once, you knew I mean business. 830 times he mentions they mention, the Bible mentions the word heart. Just to throw a few out there. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart. Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall dry. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Oh, y'all getting there. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. These are just a few out of the 830. He said at one point, Jesus said this, and I almost, uh, this was almost my, my text. But Jesus said this, they honor me with their lips. Ooh. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. It is, right? I try to find who said that. But it is. It is. It's good. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts. He was always talking about hearts. If we deal with the cause, our hearts, then the effects, our actions, will change accordingly. This is what we're going to walk through here in a moment. We're going to live this out right here. If we deal with the cause, our hearts, then our effects, our actions will change accordingly. And we're going to see this with this, this woman. The Bible says, out, and I'm saying if we deal with the heart, then the actions will change. Religion says, I need to change your actions when Christ and his word says we need to change your heart. And if you change your heart, then the actions will follow. Oh, I know, I know we're going somewhere. Listen. Out of the abundance of your heart. This is just word. This is not me. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaketh. That's why the Bible says that guard your heart. For it determines the course of your life. Out of the abundance of your heart, that means that if my heart is not right, then my speech is not going to be right. And if my speech is not right, then my life is going to be deep. That's my what you're talking about, Willis. You better help me in here. Listen. If my heart's not right, Life and death is in the power of tongue. I call those things as though they are not, as though they were. We spend the majority of our time trying to correct our actions instead of our hearts. Am I preaching all right here today? Do I got a few minutes? Okay. We spend most of our time trying to correct our actions instead of our hearts. And this is where Jesus is at with this woman. This is why he, he's not like the, the, the woman who was caught in adultery. Y'all remember that scripture? And they all grabbed stones and they were ready to take her out. And, and Jesus walked up and began to draw in the sand. Y'all familiar now with that story? And begins to draw in, in the dirt. And then comes to the woman and doesn't say anything. And he just says, go. He said, where are your condemners? 
neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. What a God, what a God. We spend, I'll say this again, we spend most of our time trying to correct our actions instead of our hearts. We need a heart transplant. A heart transplant is defined as taking out a diseased heart and putting in a healthy heart. Spiritually speaking, the disease is sin, addiction, unforgiveness, shame, guilt, bitterness, regret, condemnation. Are you all with me? And he says, but I want to replace that. I want to replace it with joy. I want to replace it with peace. I want to replace it with purpose. I want to replace it with kindness. I want to replace it with gentleness. I want to replace it with long suffering. I want to replace it with love and gratefulness. I want to replace it that that you need a heart transplant, that you're trying to uh, correct your actions when God's saying, I just need, oh, let me, I just want, I just want your heart. I just want your heart. If you've been to church impact at all, we always talk about giving your heart. You'll hear the terminology, giving your heart to the Lord. Has anyone here given their heart to the Lord? Yeah, yeah. you'll hear, you'll hear us say, say that or any, I'll ask somebody if they're new. Hey, have you ever given your heart to the Lord? Have you ever surrendered? Because he, he wants your heart. And most of the time, some people was like, you know what, I, I haven't right now, but I need to go home and get sh- things straightened up. No, that's action. That means you're trying to fix it. That means you're trying to do it. That means you're trying to be God. And God says, I don't need you to be God. I need you to surrender to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. This is why, this is why so many people uh, serve on a Sunday morning. On a uh, Sunday morning, we come in here and we enjoy service. We enjoy and all things are great. But the people that are involved, they come here on Saturday nights. They set up and they get things ready. People come in here early on Sunday morning. They come in, they're praying, they're setting things up. They're going here. They're putting kids ministry together. They're going here. They're putting here. When everything's done and they're preaching and the music's done, then they're tearing everything down. They're setting things back up. They're putting things away. They're going here. Why would all these people want to do that? It is like what they're doing is they are prepping for surgery. They don't do it because they have nothing else to do in their life. They know that there are folks that will walk into this church that need a heart transplant. that, That have been filled with hurt. That have been filled with disappointment. That have been filled with rejection. That have been through a nasty divorce. That have been through a nasty relationship. That have been abused. That have been mistreated. And their hearts, it has gone into their hearts. And their hearts have become bitter. And their hearts have become cold. And their hearts, and they know that we serve a God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. They know And as they're setting up, whether they're greeting, whether they're helping with coffee, whether they're helping with donuts, whether they're ushering, open the door, whether they're doing security, whether they're helping with kids ministry, they know that somebody's going to have a heart transplant today. They know that he can take out the stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. They know it's not a song, what a God, what a God. It is a song like Miss Judy said. It is a God, he's a God that was able to take a red, oh my. I once was blind, but now I see. They know, they know. Why, how do they know? Because they're a living testament of what God can do. Miss Judy mentioned in a few weeks we're getting ready to do a uh, Connect Groups launch. Anybody, why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? Why, why, why we got all that? You know what the Connect Group is like? I'm just going to throw it out there. It's like in 
surgery when there's a heart transplant. On a heart transplant, you need tools. And connect groups is the same way. It's a tool. It's basically like saying scalpel, gauze, suture, scissors, clamp. Connect groups are a tool to use to help you with the transplant that he's doing in your life. That your heart, that your heart, that your heart has been filled that you're worthless. That your heart has been filled with disappointment. That your heart has been filled with somebody because you know, you've heard it even from a young age that, that words hurt. And some of you, I don't know who has said it. I don't know what the enemy used or maybe a teacher, maybe government, maybe somebody has spoken into your life that you'll never be anything, you'll never amount to anything, that you're worthless. Those things get in your heart. That's what, that's what uh, the Bible says we wrestle against not flesh and blood, but against the principalities. When I'm preaching, there's wrestling going on. Y'all can't see it, but I can see it. I've been doing this long enough. There's wrestling going on. What's the wrestling? Because, because the enemy will use that hurt. The enemy will use that unforgiveness. The enemy will use those negative words that were spoken in your life, but we come to give life. Jesus said, I've come. The water that I have is life everlasting that will well up inside of you. So while I'm preaching and telling you that you have a purpose and that God has a plan for you and that you're the head and not to tell, that you're above and not beneath, that you're blessed in the city, blessed in the field. On the other side, the enemy's like, no, 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 you're worthless the devil is a lie oh, let me let me go let me i gotta go let me go it's getting late so he says all this and he says he needed to go through samaria and now he's having this conversation with this woman that he should not even be having a conversation with and now he just calls out you've had five husbands and the one now you're with and she's like oh okay and then you think he he, he kind of has a squirrel moment. What do you mean when you're talking to somebody, squirrel? Because it's like things just abruptly change, but they don't change. Because in John chapter 4, verse 23, do we have that scripture? Awesome. This is, he just talked about the five, uh, five husbands, right? And they're talking about the water and everything. And then boom, this. It was like a squirrel moment, but it wasn't a squirrel moment. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. How is it that we're going through all this stuff, and then all of a sudden, just, it, it's like me being up here just preaching right now, and me just dropping the mic, and John just come up here and just start singing. Like, I, I, it, went from, it went from preaching to worship, like, quick. Why? Why? Why 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 is he going this direction? Worship Worship is a cleansing agent that cleanses your heart. Can I say that again? Worship is a cleansing agent that cleanses your heart. Oh, I pray. Come on, baby. Notice that he meets somebody of all places at the well. As he meets at the well, he's talking about this living water. And then all of a sudden, he begins to talk about worship. After dealing with her heart, not, not her actions, but her heart. Are y'all still with me? I got a few minutes. That's why he said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The way some of us speak, we need a good cleansing. I'll say that again. The way some of us speak, we need a good cleansing. 
Nobody knows the troubles I've been through. How you doing today? I'm doing all right, Pastor. I understand you have tough days. I understand you have difficult days. And I understand you get discouraged. We live in a fallen world. We're of this fleshly nature. That's why we so look forward to heaven. But when you're on day 45 and you still nobody knows. You can have a day, but when that day turns into weeks and then turns into months, that, that gets in your heart. Hello? But notice how he says here. Can we pull that scripture back up, please? Notice he says here, he says, but the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers. Somebody shout True. True, doesn't say just worshipers, he says true worshipers. I was like, oh, no, you didn't. True worshipers. I looked up that word true there in the, in the Greek, and it means real, intense. I'm like, oh, real, intense. And then you start looking, though, and you start thinking about that. It's not by accident that he said true worshipers. And then just say worshipers, he said true worshipers. True means real and intense. And then you think about it, I think it's a couple chapters over in John chapter 7 where he starts talking about out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. The enemy doesn't want an intense church. The enemy wants a church that will just go through the motions. That will just have lip service. That and Jesus said it. He says, y'all are just a bunch of whitewashed tombs. Imagine living back in those days. Like now the terminology they use to somebody insults you. Jesus, what? Well, you're a whitewashed tomb. <laughs> Did you hear what he just called me? He just called me a I can't even say it from the kids. I can't say it. Whitewashed tombs it goes back to that you have this outward facade like you have it all together, but inside you're a hot mess. Hello? And he says, I, I, the enemy doesn't want an intense church. The enemy wants a church that will just go through the motions, the lip service, the whitewashed tombs, the, the dead dried up. Why, hey John, can you bring that out? This is, this is why the enemy doesn't want an intense church. Can you bring that other thing? Thank you. This is why the enemy, can you all see this? This is, I'm going to show you why the enemy doesn't want, thank you. This is why the enemy doesn't want an intense church. Our hearts are constantly... And maybe y'all are perfect and you don't have this, but for me, our hearts are constantly under attack. They just are. I mean, it, listen, I just give you scripture. It's not even in my notes. I'm just telling you. The enemy walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Right? Hello? The enemy is not looking around and, and he, you know, oh, the devil flat my tire. The devil flat my tire. No, you ran over a nail. Don't you see it? There's a big old nail in your tire. And the devil knows, you'll just put another tire on. What inconvenience your day? Yeah, a little bit. But the enemy's smarter than that. He goes after the one thing that he knows Jesus wants all of. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't, uh, ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. 
That's how the enemy works. How did the enemy get kicked up out of heaven, according to Isaiah? He wanted the glory of God. He wanted the glory. I want the glory. I want, I want, I want to have this. Isaiah says, I will, I will send, I will go, I will. That's how the enemy won. And he knows, the enemy says, here's what I want. I, I want the one thing that God wants. Their heart. So what he's going to do, what the enemy is going to do, is just like he did in the beginning, is that he tries to corrupt. Here comes disappointment. Here comes anxiety. Here comes fear. Here comes condemnation. Here comes hurt. Here comes that mess. Here comes your past. Oh, we can even throw it in there because I preached it a couple weeks ago. Here comes George. Yeah, you had to be there for that message. Hello, are you there? And the enemy says, I, I, want, I, want to, I want to corrupt their hearts. I want them to hold on to those things. But here's, here's, the, here's the difference maker. We can use this. Oh, I'll use this. This is why... Can y'all hear me? I apologize if you can't hear me online, but I don't know how to make it happen. If you can hear me. <laughs> and so our hearts are constantly under attack. That's why he says guard, guard your hearts, right? Every day. Put on the armor of God. The breastplate, right? The breastplate. Why? I'm guarding my heart. Because constantly depression's coming, fear's coming, anxiety's coming. Unforgiveness is coming. The bitterness is constantly, always coming after us. I'm sorry, we live in a fallen world. Most people say, oh, we're living hell on earth. It, it's not hell on earth. It's just, it's the enemy's playground to a sense. And he's constantly attacking, 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 and he's trying to figure out any way. And this is why Jesus said, you have five husbands. There's something going on there. I'm not the smartest cat in the world. But if you had five and now you hadn't even taken a break and you got somebody else with you? What would you say? Oh, I know you And that's why Jesus was saying, true worshipers, because there are things. We think. A little bit on Sunday morning is going to do it. We think going to church for one hour and 15 minutes. Pastor, you preached a little longer, so. There you go. There you go. He went over. He went over. I looked at my watch. I'm, he ain't going to finish by now. He ain't landing the plane. I know somebody just looked at somebody. He ain't landing the plane. It's 1145. He ain't landing it. That's where I hung out in the foyer. In fellowship, like you said, don't do like love. Hello? This is why he said true worship. This is why he said true worship. I'm trying to land the plane. He said true because it has to be it has to be, it has to be intense. People ask, well, you know, I, I like the church and I like the people, but the, the pastor's a little intense. I, 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 like, I, li I like the song they sang. I like it, but they only need to just sing it once. They don't have to keep repeating what a God. I know what a God. I mean, they were like on that song for 10 minutes. What a God, what a God. It's so intense. Somebody's got their hands lifted up. The lady, like three aisles down, mascara's running down her face. It's too much in here. Like, I walk in, I'm like, oh. Why is it so intense? Because worship is a cleansing agent.
And I'm sorry to tell you, I'm sorry to break your heart, but a little dub is not going to do you. I don't know who come up with that phrase, but it don't work here at Impact Church. It has to be, can you hold this for one second? I don't want to throw it and I break it and then I got to buy a new one and then we got to do all that and it's just too much. But he says, would he tell her? And so I'm finishing here. So he's talking about true worship. And he says, this will cleanse your heart. Now he's dealing with her heart, right? He's got, he's got her heart. He's got her heart. Now watch, watch. What? Boom, he brings this home. Because he says, if you deal with the heart, then the actions will take care of themselves. Well, how did, how did that happen? Last scripture right here. I'm laying in a plane. John chapter 4, verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men. She left the water pot. She left the water pot. She left the water pot. But you, but you, you have to understand the context of this, that she has put all this time, she has put all this energy, she has put all this into her day to carry this water pot down to be able to help everybody else out. Everybody was relying on her. Everybody was expecting. Somebody shout expecting. Expecting, expecting her to come back with the water, expecting her. Can I preach to somebody that's just people put high expectations on you, expecting you to always be there, expecting you to provide the money, expecting you to do this, expecting you to answer your phone when you do it, expecting you to reply as soon as you get the text message, expecting you to do that. They were expecting this woman to come back with this water. She's invested in time. She went in the heat of the day. Read it for yourself. She went when no one else went. She's put everything into it, but it says here, now that he's got her heart, now she leaves her water pot. Let me put it in a bow right here. She left the thing that will pacify, go after the one who will satisfy. Here. That's a cue for the old song, Jesus on that main line. Tell them what you want. All right, God, we got we to listen. Now here is where it pulls together. That when he has your heart, and when you're willing to let go, and he has your heart, and you're willing to cleanse him, then it takes care of the actions. Then she walks away. What are you willing to let go of for more of him? You cannot embrace your future while your arms are around your water pots. Until Jesus is enough for you, no person or thing will ever be. Stand to your feet this morning. John has no guitar, so I have. <laughs> I 
Lift your hands towards heaven. Say, Father, create in me a clean heart. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for those here today that are struggling with actions. But we pray today that you would go after the cause, our hearts. That Jeremiah says, above all things, our hearts are deceitfully wicked. Father, we ask in our prayer today is create in us a clean heart. That we don't have that kind of power to break the things that have us held down. We are not that strong. If we were that strong, we would have had broken it a long time ago. That addiction, that mess, that abusive relationship, whatever it may be. If we were that strong, we would have walked away a long time ago. But Lord, I pray that you would deal with hearts today. That there would be a cleansing of hearts today. And Lord, that they would learn to guard their heart. And as they begin to allow worship and as they allow the word and as they allow Jesus to begin to cleanse their hearts, then like the woman at the well, she walked away from the water pot. That as somebody here today allows the cleansing of the word with worship, with fellowship, then they'll be able, I don't know what water pot they have in their life, but they'll be able to walk away. Give them the strength here today. Father, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen, amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together. Hey, if the ushers want to come down forward, we're getting ready to give. Um, are we praying for Joe? Joe, come on. And We had some kids that weren't here last week that need prayer. Molly, you were, uh, you were at the fair. Did you win, Molly? Huh? You look cool, though. You were like kind of like you had that. Why, let me ask this question. I know it's not church related. Sorry, I've been meaning to ask this. Why like the, when you do the, the straight like faces like intense, why do they do that? That's just a thing. Because it was like so intense. I see it on TikTok all the time. The people, they. <laughs> and I've seen you with the same thing. I'm like, oh, well, he's like TikTok. I love it. Joe. Right. Yeah. Come on. If you weren't here last week, we want to pray for you. Joe's somewhat shipping out tomorrow, right? Oh, you want to talk? No, I just, he, he was very, he wanted me to very specifically say he's just going infantry for now. He, okay. And then we'll see where God leads him from there. So just be praying for direction yeah. after that training. Oh. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> All right. Hey, stretch your hands. Here, Mama, you pray. Yeah, yeah, you be uh, Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your hand upon Josiah's life. Yeah. That you said in your word that you have carried him. Yeah. Before he was even born. <laughs> And that you would carry him until his hairs on his head are gray, God. Yeah. That you formed him in my womb for such a time as this, Lord God. That you say there's no greater love than a man who will lay down his life for a friend. Yeah. And that he is called to serve in such a capacity, God. 
I thank you for the bonds that he's going to make in the army, Father God, Lord Jesus. But more importantly, I just thank you that you are going to make him a light that is going to shine bright in every avenue and every place that his feet tread, Father God. I thank you that no weapon formed against him shall prosper, Lord God, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, Father God. I pray for a chaplain that will speak life into him, Father God, that will be a mighty man or woman of God, Lord Jesus, not somebody who placates but will speak truth and life to him lord god i pray that he learns to cling to you like he has never clung to you before that you will be his bread of life when he is hungry that you will be his water when he is thirsty that you will as we sang today will become his everything lord jesus and we ask you lord god to go before him and make his path straight father god even in the hard times, Father God, that you will remove every obstacle, every hindrance, every burden, everything that is designed to trip him up, and that you will make him a man who doesn't stumble, but that rises above in every situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I mean, we're just going to pray for all of them this way. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just keep going. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I yes. just thank you for Molly and for yes. Ryan, Lord God. I thank you for the coverings yes. over their life yes. and where you yes. have placed them in the schools that you have placed them in, Lord God. And for the fields and talents and gifts that you have placed in each of them, Lord God. I thank you that your covering is upon them, that no weapon formed against yes. them shall prosper. Yes. That you are their hedge and their shield, yes. that you will protect their hearts, Lord God. Father God, that their hearts will spring forth a life this year in yes. ways that they have never known known that you will allow them to be a mouthpiece to their generation in the rooms that they walk into lord god that they will speak life father god in a generation where death is so prevalent father god that they will be mouth they will be mouthpieces of peace and prosperity of the hearts and father god that their souls will prosper in ways that they couldn't even imagine this year lord god that you will stretch them in mighty ways in jesus name we pray amen All right, go ahead, ushers. Ushers are going to come around. Make sure uh, they're praying this week, gatekeepers, so make sure you fill out, right? Is it Monday? Oh, the 6? Six? 6 o'clock, gatekeepers, right? Yeah, so fill out the prayer cards because the gatekeepers are going to be praying for the prayer cards. You can put your offering. If you give online, you can use the QR code. Listen, if this is your first time here, make sure you see somebody after service. Don't take off running. Because we have a gift for you, and we appreciate that you are here today. We love you. Thank you so much for enduring today. Don't forget, next week, last one service for the summer, and then we back at two services, 945 and 1115. If you need prayer today, Butch and Jill are down here if you need prayer. If you want to give your heart to the Lord, they'll pray with you here today. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday.